Joining me now is NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we just heard, as we mentioned, another powerful speech from President Zelensky to the U.S. Congress. I'll get into his specific asks in just a moment, but I do want to begin with that rather sharp rebuke that he directed at institutions meant to prevent war, and of course that, that would include NATO. He said they don't work and called for new ones that have the, quote, strength to provide whatever is needed to stop conflicts immediately, to save the world. How do you respond to that? So I fully understand the desperation um, expressed by President uh, Zelensky, and that's also the reason why NATO allies provide uh, significant support to Ukraine. And ministers at the meeting in Brussels today agree that we need to provide also, of course, continue to provide uh, military support as allies do. Uh, and the U.S. is, is leading those uh, efforts. Uh, when it comes to NATO, NATO's uh, core responsibility, main responsibility, is to protect uh, 1 billion people living in 30 NATO allied countries. And we have been able to do that for more than 70 years. Uh, and we have stepped up our efforts with increased presence of NATO troops in the eastern part of the alliance to remove any room for miscalculation or misunderstanding in Moscow about our readiness to uh, prevent any attack on any NATO allied country uh, yeah. in light of what is happening in Ukraine now. But with all due respect, President Zelensky is saying that's not enough, that, that you haven't been able to prevent and now stop a, a three-week war that has killed thousands of his citizens. As our core task is to prevent an attack on NATO allied countries, and we have done so for more than 70 years, and we continue to do that. And that's the reason why we reinforce our collective defense, uh, uh, especially in the yeah. eastern part of the alliance. Uh, Ukraine is not a NATO member, but Ukraine is a highly valued partner. Uh, our NATO allies have trained tens of thousands of Ukrainian troops for many years. We have over many, many years provided uh, essential equipment to Ukraine, and allies are now providing even more uh, uh, support, uh, including with air defense systems and other uh, advanced weapon systems to help them to uh, fight the invading Russian forces. Yeah, no, no, if there's one thing we've learned out of all of this is that Ukraine is definitely not a NATO member, and it's something we've heard over the past few days with President Zelensky even acknowledging that it won't be one anytime soon. I, I'm just, to put a button on this, uh, wanting to reiterate his point that if NATO wasn't doing enough to prevent Russia's invasion into Ukraine, that NATO countries could be next. But that's exactly why we have implemented the biggest reinforcement of collective defense since the end of the Cold War. We now have hundreds of thousands of NATO troops on heightened alert across the whole alliance. We have 100,000 U.S. troops in Europe. It has increased several thousands just over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have more than 40,000 uh, uh, troops under direct NATO command, uh, supported by uh, significant air and, uh, and naval uh, capabilities. Uh, so this is what we do to make sure that there is no attack on, on, uh, on any NATO allied countries, uh, uh, country. And of course, NATO has the responsibility to support Ukraine, as NATO allies do. But we also have a responsibility to prevent this conflict from escalating beyond Ukraine, because the suffering, the death, the destruction we see now in Ukraine can become even worse if this conflict in Ukraine escalates to full-fledged war between NATO and Russia in Europe. Yeah, and one way that, that NATO members, including President Biden, view a, a possible escalation uh, of this war that could include possibly bringing the fight to a NATO and its borders and beyond that is to instill now and impose a no-fly zone. That seems to be a non-starter, even though President Zelensky continues to ask for that. Um, other than that, there, there are other, there is other aid that is headed now to Ukraine. Uh, the other ask that he's asking for, in, in addition to defense systems, right, is airplanes, our airplanes. Will that be part of the package now? So NATO allies are providing uh, more and more uh, military support equipment uh, to, uh, to Ukraine, including advanced uh, systems also to protect them in the air air defense systems, drones, and other uh, uh, means to also deal with the threats they are faced with in uh, the airspace or in air. So uh, I think for operational reasons, we should be a bit careful going into every specific type of weapon system we are delivering, NATO allies are, are delivering. But the message from the ministers today 
is that yeah. we really need to uh, uh, step up to provide more support. I welcome the announcement from the United States and other allies to provide more funding for uh, military uh, assistance. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 of course, it's first and foremost the courage of the Ukrainian armed forces that has stopped uh, and, and fought back the Russian invasion. But the training and the support that NATO allies have delivered over many years and continue to deliver military equipment has, of course, been essential in enabling them uh, to fight back against the uh, invading Russian uh, forces. But, but but you can't confirm now, I, I understand the sensitivity here, but you can't confirm now that, that planes, uh, specifically the, uh, the big 29s, will be part of this package. I cannot go into the specific. I only think, the only thing I can say is that NATO allies are providing uh, uh, also systems that can help them to protect them against uh, air uh, uh, attacks, uh, uh, missiles, uh, uh, air and missile defense systems, including advanced systems, which actually help them to shoot down planes and missiles uh, over these weeks. And, uh, and, uh, and that's the reason why we also see the value of this uh, military uh, support, the, provi the, the provision of uh, advanced uh, uh, military equipment. Yeah. Uh, U.S. administration officials have confirmed this morning that National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan spoke today with his Russian counterpart. That would be the first high-level contact since this invasion began. And it comes as new CNN reporting reveals that NATO has also tried to connect with Russia and has thus far been unsuccessful. Does that sound to you like Russia is trying to cut NATO out of any communication at this point? Well, our commanders, they have the lines uh, for communications, uh, and uh, it is extremely important that uh, we do whatever uh, possible uh, to prevent any incidents uh, or accidents, uh, and if they happen, to ensure that don't, they don't spiral out of control. Uh, because with heightened tensions, with more military presence close to our borders, we saw the attack on this international training center close to the Polish border a few days ago. Of course, the risk for incidents or, or accidents has, uh, has increased. And therefore, uh, it is important that our military commanders have the necessary lines of communications with Russia. And of course, we will use them if necessary. Yeah, the, the lines are open, but have the Russians responded? Well, we have commanders which can reach out to Russia if needed. And, uh, and uh, that's uh, the most important thing for me.